As Congress debates immigration reform, there's one proposal you won't hear on Capitol Hill. What if you just opened borders and let everyone go where they want? In fact, by one measure, if we allowed people to move around the world, world GDP per capita would double, basically eliminating poverty overnight. Not exactly the conventional wisdom, but the argument seems simple enough. If people could move to where they're more productive, global productivity would rise and poverty would fall. If you close borders to people, well... That's just like preventing free trade in people, and it's a much bigger distortion than preventing free trade in goods. Controls on immigration are probably the biggest distortion we have on trade. That double the GDP figure comes from Harvard economist Lant Pritchett, who says that when it comes to increasing global productivity, quote, the gains from labor mobility just swamp everything else on the table. He puts it like this. The flow of goods and capital is already pretty open. But if you completely liberalize trade in goods, you'd get a worldwide gain of about $109 billion. If you completely liberalize the flow of capital, that gain would be about $65 billion. And gains from complete labor mobility would be 1,000 times greater, $65 trillion. But he says, let's put open borders aside. Increasing migration by only 3% would still result in a $170 billion gain. And that's more than rich countries spend in total on development aid worldwide. So it works for people who might need jobs, but what about the countries they go to? Well, this is where things get muddy. While economists agree that on the high skill end, immigration doesn't pose a threat. At the lower skilled end, the arguments get much more complicated. Um, there is some risk that wages would go down or it become more difficult for people to find jobs in the types of occupations which, in which they compete with, with immigrant workers. So for people doing th those jobs, there is some evidence that there may be a negative impact. To demonstrate that negative impact, people often point to another Harvard economist, George Borjas, who found a 3% reduction in wages, not annually, but over a period of 20 years. And even Borjas said, quote, the methodological arsenal of modern econometrics cannot find a single shred of evidence that immigrants have a major adverse impact on the earnings and job opportunities of natives of the United States. However, most citizens don't vote based on econometrics. And in a democratic country, voters have the final say. Here's how Gary Johnson, the 2012 libertarian presidential candidate, explains his views for immigration. We should make it not open borders position from this, but, but uh, make it as easy as possible for somebody that wants to come into this country and work to get a work visa. Compare that to the Libertarian Party platform as recently as 2004, which called for, quote, the elimination of all restrictions on immigration, the abolition of the Immigration and Naturalization Service, and the Border Patrol. Once you start trying to sway voters, the purely economic question starts to get sidelined. I think it really comes down to whether you think people have the right to move and whether you think countries have the right to keep them out. I think the moral argument in favor of open borders is really very strong and that why should where we are born, why should that accident of birth determine so much of our lives? And you're stuck there, you're literally imprisoned there because other countries won't, won't let you out. The UN conventions give people the right to move within their countries and also guarantee the right to leave your country. I guess it's not an unconditional right. Um, it depends on there being someone willing to, willing to take them. Will future generations judge us for our unwillingness to open our borders? Nationalism is considered okay in a way that racism and sexism are not. So it's okay to think, no, we don't want those foreigners, or to think we don't want foreigners taking our jobs, in a way which, if we said this about race or about sex, uh, would be considered, you know, beyond the pale. In Washington, D.C., Karina Stenquist, RT.